Hi everyone, this is the first lecture of further topics in probability going online. I'm going to redo this little lemma which we'll need for Borel Cantelli since there were not so many people on the last lecture. And then I'm going to proceed later on with Borel Cantelli lemmas and so on. So the lemma we're proving is the following. Let AK be a sequence that's between 0 and 1 and ak goes to zero. Okay, The question we're looking at is the following. If we have a product from 1 through infinity of 1 minus the ak's, the question is, will this product go to zero or will this product stay positive? If the ak's were a fixed number, anything between zero and one, the 1 minus ak would be a fixed number, not changing with k between 0 and 1. The infinite product, of course, would go to 0. If you multiply together even 0.9 in an infinite number of times, of course, that goes to 0. However, the ak's go to 0 themselves, so the 1 minus ak's go to 1. The things you multiply together are closer and closer to 1, so it's not at all clear if the product is actually 0 at the end or not. And so the lemma we're going to do, let me put here a little lemma here. The lemma we're going to do is the following. This thing in the limit, the infinite product is zero, exactly when the sum of the AKs is infinite. This is the lemma we're going to show, okay? So let's look at the proof and if you notice, these are two statements. Statement one is that product equals to zero implies sum equals infinity. Statement two, sum equals infinity implies product equals zero. I'm going to start with proving the second one, so this direction here. If the product is infinite, then the, uh, sorry, if the sum is infinite, then the product is zero. And to do that, I'm going to draw you a little graph of two functions one function is the exponential minus x function and that looks like this and the other function i want to draw you is the linear function one minus x which is something like that one minus x okay at 1, uh, sorry, at x equals to 0 and height 1, these two functions meet. And otherwise, 1 minus x has a slope of minus 1, and e to the minus x also has a slope of minus 1 at x equals to 0. So 1 minus x is, the, is just the tangent to e to the minus x. And as you see from this graph or convexity of the exponential function, it is always true for every x we have e to the minus x is above 1 minus x. Okay, that's a simple fact from calculus. And this is what we can use to, use to show the first statement of this lemma. All right? Because, <clears throat> so what we want to show is that the sum infinite implies the product equals to zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing up the product from 0 to infinity, 1 minus ak. The 1 minus ak's are smaller than or equal than the exponential function, so product k from 0 to infinity, exponential function minus x. Okay. The product of the exponential functions is, of course, the exponential of the sum. Uh, sorry, this should this is not x, of course, this is a k. Exponential of the sum of the a k's from 0 to infinity. Okay? And so, if the infinite sum is infinite, if the infinite sum of the a k's is infinite, then you can easily see that e to the minus of this infinite sum 
is zero. And via this inequality, the infinite product is also zero. So we're done with this part of the proof. Okay? That's the first direction. All right, I'm going to give this a page number one. And let's then do the second direction of this lemma, which is pretty similar. But it's going to be a slightly different function to start with. Okay, so the second direction, again, what do we want to do? We want to prove this lemma. So this is page two. We want to prove this lemma in the other direction. Here is the lemma again. So the lemma said that uh, product is zero if and only if the sum is infinite. We want to prove this direction now. So if the product is zero, then the sum is infinite. Okay, that's the second part of the proof we're doing. And to this order, I'm going to draw you a slightly different graph. And this is going to go like this. Again, I'm going to draw 1 minus x in red. 1 minus x in red, which will look something like that. And this time I'm going to change the exponential function into e to the minus 2x, which is again 1 at x equals to 0, but it's a bit steeper. It's something like, of course it doesn't go positive, but it's something like this, e to the minus 2x. Okay? Now, what you can read off from this graph and from simple calculus is that if x is small, it's positive, but small, then what you can see from here is that e to the minus 2x actually goes below 1 minus x. Okay, in this range here, there is a positive value, there is a positive interval from 0, where e to the minus 2x is actually bounding from below 1 minus x. Now, one thing we assumed is that the a, k go to 0. Okay, the sequence a, k goes to 0, which means that there exists a critical index k, such that if k is bigger than little k, uh, little k is bigger than capital K, then the a k is small for this purpose here, for the estimation we have to hold. Okay, and therefore I can look at this product which this time I'm going to start from k to infinity of the 1 minus a k. And since the index k goes from capital K, a k is small enough so that I have this estimation here. So this is going to be larger, larger than or equal or larger doesn't really matter. That's too large or equal. The infinite product from capital K to infinity of the exponential minus 2 of the a case. Okay? Which is of course equal to the exponential minus twice the sum of the a case starting from capital K to infinity. Alright? And what we're doing now is the direction, again, the direction the right so let me go back to the previous page we're doing this direction which means that we want to prove that if the product is zero then the sum is infinite okay so if the product is zero the product from one to infinity is zero then the product from k to infinity is also zero why is that because the difference between the two is a finite product and all of the a k's are between zero and one strictly so the infinite product from 1 to infinity is 0 exactly when the infinite product from k to infinity is 0. Okay? So let me put this here. If the product from 1 to infinity of 1 minus a k is 0, that implies 
the d product from k to infinity of d1 minus a k is 0 and that's again because we have all the a k strictly between 0 and 1 so none of them is 1 minus a k is never 0 and if this is 0 then from the line above from here and here it follows that the sum from k to infinity of the ak is infinite because exponential minus that sum is zero and that's exactly what we wanted to prove of course if the infinite sum from k is infinite then the infinite sum from zero or from k equals to one is also infinite and that's the end of the proof thank you